Hey, believe it or not, we have made it to the final family of this semester. Um, and so this is actually an easy one for you. There's only one species in this family. This is the Scyanidae, or the freshwater drums. Um, actually, this is the drums. Freshwater drum is the only freshwater representative of this family. Most of the, the other members of this family are marine. Um, the only species that you're going to find is um, the freshwater drum, which is also called uh, the sheep's head, it's also called the croaker, it's also called the gaspergoo, which is my favorite name for it. Like I said, everything else is marine. Um, this is a fairly common fish, say in Kentucky Lake, but it is like the most common fish in the Mississippi River. It's got a really good reproductive strategy, which is to broadcast spawn and the eggs float. You'll remember that like striped bass, the eggs sink and they kind of tumble along and you've got some fish like uh, you know the pikes where the eggs adhere to vegetation and you've got some species that build nests. These guys just let their eggs go and they float, which means they can just sort of float wherever they need to and, and so they have very good survival. Um, and so this is a kind of easy fish to identify. One of the things you're looking for is the very long soft dorsal. You see how that soft dorsal extends all the way down to the caudal peduncle. They've got what I call high shoulders, you know, big hump on their shoulder. Um, this is not something you'll find in any key, but I think they have a very human looking mouth. Their mouth and their lips look like a human's mouth. You also note that they've got these filaments on their pelvic fins and they seem to kind of drag those. I think maybe they use those to sense where the bottom is. I'm just guessing, but they seem to drag those on the bottom. Um, these are mollusk eaters, so they have well-developed molar-like pharyngeal teeth, so they can crush the shells of mollusks, but they do eat a lot of other stuff. They also eat fish, they also eat crayfish, they also eat insects, so they're not exclusively mollusk eaters, but that's just one of the important things in their diet. And on a big one, you can look down and you can clearly hear, see those pharyngeal teeth, or you can stick your finger in there and clearly feel those throat teeth. They also um, have very, very large otoliths, which people call the ivory, uh, used for jewelry, um, it's just something that because they're so big and noticeable, people don't realize that all fish have otoliths. It's just these are so well developed and they're so white and thick that people notice them in this species. Um, of course, they're called drum because they drum. The whole family uses underwater uh, communication extensively, which is why they have well-developed otoliths because sound is very important to them. They have these muscles that vibrate very rapidly that are attached to the gas bladder and so they use the gas bladder as sort of a drum to make these noises. Some references say that these uh, muscles are the fastest vertebrate muscles, that they can, they can contract faster than any other vertebrate muscle. That, that could be true. I, I don't have anything to back that up, but I know I've read it. Um, anyway, that's where they get their names, croaker, drum, because of those sounds they make. So these are the otoliths. These are actually some smaller ones. I've seen them bigger than this, but they're well developed and huge. Um, so I've given, given you some links on the Canvas page where there are some uh, recordings of different sounds made by drum. And then I think I've got a page on there of just different fish sounds. But uh, you can hear some of the the wide range of sounds that the fish make underwater. But in fact, a lot of times when you catch these fish and you pull them out of the water, they'll make the same sounds. Now, um, we've talked about this before. I want to emphasize it again that sound production and sound communication is not limited just to the drums. It's very common in fish. Uh, again, sound waves travel very well underwater, so it makes sense that, that lots of fish would use communication. Um, and so, for example, I think we talked about catfish that uh, click their pectoral spine, which we call stridulations, and I showed you a video of that where they can vibrate that and they've got little ridges inside the, the joint where their pectoral spine connects to the, uh, to the rest of the skeleton and so they can make noise, noises that way. Um, there's lots of species that use their teeth and grind their teeth or click their teeth to make sounds. 
Um, we talked about how the drum thumps the gas bladder. We also have talked about how the gas bladder can magnify sounds and you can use Weberian ossicles to improve your hearing. So these are all ways that fish improve their hearing. And there's also uh, some researchers found a group of fish that communicate by releasing gas through the anus. And they labeled these uh, fast repetitive ticks or FERTs, which I think is a clever name. Anyway, the point being is that uh, underwater communication via sound is very well developed in lots of fish species. And um, that's very well developed in the drum. The Scianidae, which I just talked about, that's our last family. Um, let me know if you got any questions, and uh, we'll see you later. Thanks.